In today's video, I want to cover setup and configuration of Nextcloud using the Zima board. If you want to know more about how to do this, then stick around for the rest of this video. And always, if you find this video useful, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you're planning to own a Zima board, you already know the value of the device as a one-stop solution for many things. I recently did a video on using and configuring Plex and was pleasantly surprised how well it handled multiple streams. Today I want to add Nextcloud to the mix as a free alternative to doing things like Dropbox to synchronize your files across multiple devices and to demonstrate how easily we can use this with something like Tailscale and seemingly integrate your offsite and mobile devices. To start with, let's click on the applications and install the Nextcloud app. Once it's installed, like other Zima board and Docker applications, you have to make a couple of setting changes before we can actually launch the program. The first thing you have to think about is where you want the data and files stored. By default, it'll try to store the files in the internal storage of the Zima board, which will work, but it's not the best idea in the long run, as you'll find it will use up your main storage space pretty quickly. Depending on your configuration, you can either store your files on a SATA drive, a USB drive, or an existing network location. For purposes of this video, we're going to set up the program from scratch using a SATA drive, a USB drive, and a network storage location, such as a NAS, to cover the different options that you need to change based on your needs. Before launching, click the triple dots and select Settings. Scroll down to where it says Volume. This is the only place you really need to make a change as it determines the location of the application and where the data will be stored. For the first example, we're going to use a SATA drive. Click on the gray square and let's click on the top where it says Data and find your external drive. Double click on that drive and select the folder that you've already created. And if you haven't created one, go ahead and create one. Click on the folder that you want to use and, and click on Select to pick that location. Remember that this is for the container and the data. One last thing you want to look at before saving is the port number that it assigned. You'll see this again when you log in, but writing it down will save you some time and aggravation and simplify things when you're setting things up on other computers. I'd recommend sticking with the default port, but it does assign a new port every time you do redo the installation. But you can overwrite this and put in your own port if you prefer to do it that way. We are now ready to start the application and log in for the first time. Once you click on the icon, you'll be prompted to set up the admin account. Type the admin name and password and select install. When it's done, it'll prompt you to install the recommended apps, which you can do if you want to, but I prefer not to as I don't, really don't want all this other stuff. I just want to use the program to do file sync. When it's completed, you'll be at the main screen. If we click on the files icon in the upper left, you'll see there's a list of files and folders. It's showing the main files interface where you can actually hit the plus sign and upload files from here. There's also a bunch of default garbage that they put in here that you can delete. If we go to the account logo, we can access the administrator's options. And if we go to the system tab, here is where we can verify that we've installed and is storing the data on the correct locations. Since the Zima board only has 32 gigs of storage, and I have a one terabyte SSD attached to it, it's pretty easy to see that our configuration is working and that we are using the terabyte drive and not the internal storage. As this video is about installing and configuring Nextcloud, we won't go into the options, but if you're interested in learning more about Nextcloud, let me know in the comments below and I may consider doing a video later on on more detailed usage of the program. Before we get into how to set up the client, and make sure it connects, let's quickly cover what we need to change if you prefer to do your initial installation using your USB drive instead of the SATA drive as we did in the first part. So if you don't have a SATA drive in your system or you want to use a USB drive instead, you can still set up the app in storage location the same way as using a SATA drive. Except for after the download, you have to make one configuration change in the settings to point Nextcloud to the new USB location. After you've installed the app, as you did in the previous step, click on the triple dots and scroll down to Volumes and modify the host section to read the new location. In my case, I will change it from slash media slash casa OS, put the name of my drive, that's the external USB drive, and leave the rest alone. That's all you really have to change and it will complete the install and create a data folder on the USB drive. 
To verify, we can log in, click on the profile icon, go to the administrator settings, scroll down to the bottom, click on settings, and now on the right side, scroll down a little bit until you see the word disk. That reading and statistics should match the, the stats of your USB drive that you just used. If it doesn't, you will probably need to go back and check your settings and redo the installation. If it does, you're pretty much finished with the install. And a last suggestion is I would make sure that this is exactly where you want it and it's working before you start installing clients. It'll save you a lot of time. Now that we have our server running, let's cover the client installation to see how we can attach our new Zima board Nextcloud server to a Windows PC. There's a couple of things I want to clarify before we get into the setup and configuration, and that's that I'm only going to cover installing devices that are on your local network or devices that are connected through a VPN such as Tailscale or OpenVPN. For security reasons, we're not going to be covering using Nextcloud connected directly to the internet as that poses a lot of security concerns and I don't recommend doing it in this configuration. To install the client, go to their website at nextcloud.com and select Get Nextcloud and select Desktop and Mobile Apps. Pick the OS that you want to use and download the application. For this video, I'll select the Windows 64-bit installation to the desktop client. Once the install is complete, you'll be prompted to log in. Once you click on Login, the next screen, you'll need to enter the IP address and port number that you saw earlier in your initial setup. If you don't remember or you're not sure what it is, you can always go back to your Zima board main screen, open up Nextcloud app, and go to the mobile and app section and copy the address that's at the bottom of the screen. Remember that we are installing local only, so we will not be using HTTPS, but rather be using HTTP. If you connect through a VPN, such as Tailscale or OpenVPN, the setup is exactly the same as a local device. The VPN will handle the secure and encrypted connections between the home device and the remote devices. I would recommend copying this IP address in the port somewhere as you'll need this for every computer that you add it to or every mobile device that you install the app on. Once you type in the IP address and port and hit next, you'll be prompted to connect to your account. Type in your username and password and grant access to the new app and you should be good to go. You have to do this for every computer or mobile device. In the next screen, you can either accept the defaults or change the folder location and the way it syncs data. My suggestion right now is to leave most of the defaults alone and only change the folder location should you want to sync or have your data folder somewhere else. Click connect when you're done and it will update the sync and you should be good. In some of the installations, you may be asked to reboot after the app installed. So go ahead and do that and everything should be good to go. The last thing we need to do is do a quick test. Open the file explorer from the PC that you just installed the Nextcloud app on and copy one or more files to the newly created Nextcloud folder. Once you're finished, go back to the Zima board, log in to the Nextcloud app and look at the file section. You should now see the files that were copied from the client PC. Assuming you see the files, you're pretty much done and ready to move to the next client. One note, as I'm always concerned about security, I want to remind you that although there are many ways to install Nextcloud and you can install Nextcloud directly over the internet, I would suggest sticking with something like OpenVPN, Cloudflare Tunnel, or Tailscale. I'll leave links to past videos I did on some Tailscale and OpenVPN videos, as well as a video by Crosstalk Solutions on setting up a Cloudflare tunnel, as all of these solutions are much better and more secure than port forwarding your own server to the internet, even with SSL certificates. Anyway, that's about it for today's video, so please post any comments or questions in the comment section below. And remember to like and subscribe if you find this useful. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.